Hey everybody, today I want to tell you about the Generative AI plugin for Krita. I'm very excited about this because it is currently the best tool for artists looking to incorporate AI into their workflow. Best of all, both Krita and the plugin are completely free and open source. Today I'm going to be showing you the installation and setup. In the future, I'm going to be going over various workflows and use cases. Krita is an open source, fully featured paint program similar to Photoshop and Procreate and other popular paint programs. The plugin we're going to be using runs the Stable Diffusion Image Generation software by connecting to the Comfy user interface, which is a node-based UI for Stable Diffusion. I have a tutorial that goes deeper into Comfy UI and Stable Diffusion, but this plugin simplifies all of the node setup into a simple user interface that allows you to use Stable Diffusion directly on your canvas. Also, while I was filming this video, version 1.17 of the plugin was released, and it looks like they've added some new features, so I will definitely be looking into that and filming an update for this video, but I have seen some people talking about about how they have been having some issues with the 1.17 version of the plugin. You may want to stick with the version that I'm going to be using throughout the video, which is version 1.161. I've had very few issues with that, with all the features that I've tried. Also, I apologize for the audio inconsistencies in this video. I've had to go back and refilm certain parts to make sure I've covered all the features and film parts at different times, but I wanted to make sure this was complete as possible. So let's get into it. Luckily, the plugin comes with very good installation instructions. I will link this page in the description below, but just briefly, you'll want to make sure you have Krita installed version 2.2 or later, and you can download it from krita.org. You have uh, various options for the installation, or you can download the portable version that won't actually install itself completely onto your system. Once you have Krita installed, you can download the plugin. I will link the page for that in the description below as well. This will download a zip file, which you can then install by opening Krita and going to the Tools menu and then Scripts and Import Python Plugin from File. And you'll select the zip file that you just downloaded and it will extract the files to the appropriate directories for you. Then you will need to restart Krita and then to enable the Docker, you'll need to create a new document and go to Settings dockers and then put a check next to AI image generation. The first time you see the docker it will say not connected to server and you will need to click the configure button and that will open up the settings which we're going to take a look at now. Alright so when you open the settings for the AI image generation plugin the first section here is the connection. The most simple way to connect Krita to Comfy UI is through the local managed server this will install Comfy UI on your system for you and link it directly to Krita. So if you don't already have Comfy UI installed or you want a dedicated installation just for this, you can go ahead and uh, do it this way and it will install everything that is required. You have the option of where you want to install it and you might want to be mindful of that because it will take at least 10 gigabytes of free space. You have options as to what components you want it to install. I would suggest go ahead and installing everything if you're not sure what you're going to be using. Stable Diffusion XL is the newer, higher resolution version of Stable Diffusion, which may run too slow on older hardware to really be useful. So if you have an older GPU, you may want to skip that or you may want to go ahead and install it and just see how it does. I would also suggest you download most of these different control nets, which you'll want to play around with, and also the upscalers here. Next, we have the option for the custom server, local or remote. This will allow you to connect the plugin to a running instance of Comfy UI that you either have running locally on your machine or it can be a remote service. The default URL for a local installation is given here and you can paste that in here and click connect. If I do that for my local installation, you can see it's giving me an error saying I don't have all the required models and nodes that I need installed on my local Comfy UI installation installation in order for the plugin to run correctly. There is a page that tells you the required Comfy UI nodes and models that you'll need in order for the plugin to run correctly. And I will link this in the description below. And to install those, I could go into my manager in Comfy UI and click on install custom nodes and search for the ones that I need here and install them and do the same for the install models here. But if you're not comfortable doing all that, you may just want to stick to the local managed server here. And also keep in mind that if you are using the local managed server, uh, make sure that's not going to be running at the same time 
as another installation of Comfy UI on your system if you're going to do it that way. Lastly here, we have the online service, which it looks like they're working on some sort of cloud GPU service specifically for the plugin. If you sign up for an account, they'll give you some free tokens you can use for generations. It looks like there's no way to buy additional tokens right now, but it looks like this may be something interesting that they're working on. So if you're looking for a cloud GPU service, that may be something to keep an eye on. Also within the custom server, this will allow you to connect to a remote server such as Run Diffusion, which I use. There's a little bit of setup that goes into that, but it works well. And there's instructions on that, which I'll go ahead and put in the description also, if anybody's interested in setting that up. And I imagine it would work with other remote services that allow you to run Comfy UI as well. Next, we have the style presets. These contain all of the information for how Stable Diffusion will generate your images. The plugin comes with several already created for you, but you can create new ones by hitting the plus icon next to the uh, selection menu here. You can also delete them. You can give your style a name. The model checkpoint, this will have the biggest impact on the look of your image. There are some checkpoints that are more photorealistic and some that are more artistic or painterly style and, and some that are an anime style. Currently, the largest repository for stable diffusion models is civitai.com. Just make sure you at least go into your settings and click blur mature content so you don't wind up needing eye bleach. Again, all the links here are in the description. If I were connected to a local installation of Comfy UI instead of the cloud service that I'm connected to now, I would see a folder icon out here next to my model checkpoint uh, menu here. And if I clicked that, it would take me to the directory to which I needed to put those checkpoint files once I downloaded them. And that would be how you would install new model checkpoints by dropping them into that directory. And I would also have that option for the LORAs here, which there would be a different directory that I could open with an icon uh, out to the side here. But a LORA is a smaller model file that is added on to the checkpoint in order to give it some additional information, such as how to create a specific concept or character. You can add LORAs by clicking the add here and adjust the strength. You can add as many as you want. Those are also available on Civit AI. Underneath our model checkpoint here, we have the option for checkpoint configuration. If we expand that, we see the option for VAE. This is the model that encodes and decodes your images uh, into and out of latent space. And it can affect the quality of your image, but usually you can just leave this at checkpoint default and it will work okay unless you're having an issue. Sometimes if your image is showing up with very low contrast or very low saturation and you're not sure why, you may want to try a different VAE. Clip Skip will give Stable Diffusion a little bit more leeway in how it interprets your text prompts. And it can help a little bit with how it develops the concepts within your image. It can make a big difference with some checkpoints. You would want to refer to the page for the checkpoint that you're using. I haven't found any problems just doing override and setting it to two. I find that makes a big difference for some checkpoints and with others it doesn't seem to cause any problems. So I just leave it like that. The preferred resolution this is the image resolution the checkpoint was trained on. I think you're safe just leaving that at the default. And then you have the V prediction zero terminal SNR. Uh, if you have any idea what this does, you may want to turn that on, but I don't. So I'm going to leave that off. It looks like there may be some specific models that would require this setting, but it's not something that I've come across. Next, we have the style prompt, which is keywords that are appended to all of your prompts. So in addition to entering your text prompt here on the image generation docker you'll have a place for your positive and your negative prompt where you can type in the description of the content you want to see in your image here you can put things that you don't want to have to type every time but you want to use in most if not all of your prompts such as things that affect the quality such as best quality and high res and also um, maybe some style elements that you want to see consistently like i usually keep in all of my prompts 90s anime, retro, and cyberpunk. And then you have the option for the same thing for the negative prompt. So things like bad quality, low resolution, and blurry. Next, we have the sampler settings. And we have two different groups of settings here. One is the quality presets for the generate and the upscale. And the other is for the uh, performance in the live mode. For the generate and upscale, it's generally okay if it runs a bit slower, but we will need to set it up so that the live mode runs much more quickly. So for the 
quality presets for the generate and upscale. You have the option for the sampler. I would generally refer to the model page on Civit AI, where the creator of the checkpoint will often give suggestions on which sampler to use and how many sampling steps should be used. Otherwise, I found DPM++2 M Keras tends to work pretty well. Sampler steps of around 25 it seems to work well. You could go higher for some models. And the CFG scale, usually between 7.5 and 9, seems to work pretty well. But again, you can refer to specific settings for specific checkpoints to get the best results. For the live mode, the image is updated as you paint on your canvas, so it needs to work relatively fast. To do this, by default, the plugin uses the LCM LoRa, both for Stable Diffusion 1.5 and Stable Diffusion XL, and this allows Stable Diffusion to create an image and maintain quality with a much lower amount of sampler steps. So when using the LCM sampler here, we can set our sampler steps down to four and still get a quality image although not as good as we would have gotten using a higher number of steps with a, a different sampler, but it's a trade-off in order to get it to generate more quickly. Also, to use the LCM with a lower number of sampler steps, we need to set the CFG scale down to a much lower setting, so maybe keep that around two would be good. The CFG scale controls how closely Stable Diffusion tries to stick to your text prompt when it's creating your image, so um, a lower CFG scale will give it less creative freedom and that may affect your image quality a bit too, but again, it's a trade-off. Alternatively to that, you could use a model that's been specifically trained to create quality images with lower sampler steps, such as the Turbo models for SDXL. So here I have the VPX XL Turbo, and because this model is made specifically for generating images with lower sampler steps, I have similar settings for both generate and upscale and the live mode. I'm not using the LCM sampler for either one. I'm sticking with Euler A, which was recommended on the model page. I'm only using a couple of more sampler steps for my generate and upscale compared to the live mode here. So I just have eight for the generate and upscale and six for the live mode. So the turbo models for XTXL will allow you to generate images very quickly, both within the generate and upscale and the live mode, but there may be a trade-off in image quality. Next, we have the diffusion settings. These settings are used when you're making a selection in your image that you want to edit. These settings allow you to grow the selection and add a feather and padding to it so that the newly generated part of your image will blend in to the rest of the image a little bit better. And you can adjust these settings here and you may need to go back and adjust these for special cases as you're editing your image. For the interface, we have the prompt line count and this changes the number of lines in your prompt box in the docker so here i've got it set to two and as you can see if i add more lines i can add more space for my text prompt here but it does take up more room so i'll stick that back down to two you also have the ability to show or hide the negative prompt within the docker i think it is off by default but i have it turned on because sometimes I want to add things here quickly to remove certain things from my image. The next setting is the control ending step ratio. This will add an extra setting for the control nets that you're applying to your image. I'll cover that in just a minute, but I would suggest having it on because it can make a difference in your image generation. Another thing I suggest having on is new seed after apply. Using the same seed when you resample an image can lead to these types of results that start to look over sharpened and noisy, whereas using a new seed every time will give you more natural looking results. The last setting here is dump workflow, which looks like it might just save your prompt in the log folder, maybe if um, the program crashes or something. But I have that turned off. Lastly, here we have performance, and here you could configure some custom settings to match your hardware. That does it for the installation and settings. I hope this has been useful. Look for part two where I will be going over the different features. I'm also working on a video where I will be exploring creative workflows, so subscribe if you're interested in that. See you next time.